with this i hand over to gaurav ji and pandit uh, pandit prasad ji wonderful thank you thank you sita ji pandit ji namaskar and welcome let me briefly introduce you um no, um uh, this is uh, you know this is a treat this session i always look forward to pandit ji's wonderful lecture and demonstration um but, but pandit ji uh, of course let me introduce you he is um he has a phd he did this course a couple of years ago he is uh, you know he has a tech career but he's also a pandit a multi generational pandit and the father of one as well and uh, he is very talented very popular and um, and of course as you're seeing he serves the uh, sanatan vedic dharma he's been serving it flawlessly seamlessly and, and selflessly for the last 40 years he uh, he speaks he talks he sings he is a full package as, as you'll get to hear him uh, in today's session he's a, a, a professional singer and he he goes on tours he's been doing since the the pandemic started he's been doing online kirtans and uh, pandit ji has done more than 100 such sessions since the beginning of the pandemic and um, and so you'll hear hear from him today today i requested him to talk to us about the science and spirituality of kirtan and not only is it a joy to hear and chant and participate in the kirtan it's also something that's backed by science and you are going to hear a lot more about that from pandit ji with that said pandit ji Uh, would you do you want to present from uh, my screen i can give you uh, remote control access or uh, would you like to um, yeah uh, yeah gauri ji if you if you guys can present um, that'll be great i am actually a little bit handicapped because i'm traveling so okay, i sure. i'm limited I'm on giving you access so you should be able to press next uh, oh, okay. whenever you okay. feel like it all right if it uh, if it that, doesn't then you then you will uh, you will skip for me okay yes yes sure okay, great. all right awesome all right. all right thank you very much gauri ji namaskar everyone and uh, swagatam welcome this evening to this uh, presentation um it is an absolute pleasure to be in your company this evening um let me first of all commend and compliment all of you for taking a uh, decisive decision in your lives to be part of this wonderful concept this wonderful organization called hindu community institute as uh, gauri ji mentioned many years ago um i think it was the second second uh, second uh, year i was able to complete the uh, the complete the hci course and now i have been asked to from time to time um participate as you know um uh, as 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 the need be let me uh, first of all uh, give my pranams to all of you i'm not sure if kailash ji is on as well but um, certainly highly respected individual and a great great sevak and certainly uh making waves in terms of our cultures or scriptures and enhancing this concept of hinduism and not just hinduism but universality in terms of this oneness that we call god so my presentation today is um it's a very concise presentation it's not going to be an hour i promise you and um but it's it's very uh it's very interactive and um as i would uh, ask all of you we'll go to the, the next slide if you Or let me see if i can change it if not then we'll have to ask our jitu to do this uh, just stand by yeah got to i don't think i have controls but if you if you want to if you want to jump to the next one it's fine i want to welcome you neil ji kalash ji ah there he is namaste oh, kalash ji how are you have you come back and enlighten us and entertain us and all the things you do <laughs> so happy pandit ji can you try uh, taking control sure. again sorry yep try again Yeah, for some reason it's not it's not allowing me to. I'm sorry, and I, and I'm limited on monitor space. Oh, yeah, sure, sure, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, Sita ji, I'm going to transfer control to you. See if you can take control. All right. Let... As we uh, as we work out the uh, logistics, uh, let us all sit upright for a few minutes, if you can, wherever you are. If you're on the floor, please cross your legs. If you're on a chair, just sit upright with your back straight. I'd like you to gently close your eyes. think of any form of god or a very peaceful place that you have been to in your lives and as you breathe in obviously we practice yoga we say so as we breathe in as we exhale we say hum so hum control that breath we'll begin with a short prarthna and then we go right into our first kirtan
ಶಾ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ಸರಸ್ವತ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುಚರಣಕಮಲೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಗುರುರ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುರ್ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುರ್ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರುರ್ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ maintain that posture as we now go into kirtan the lyrics the words of this this kirtan will appear on your screen here in a minute very simple join with me sing along e ram e ram e ram e ram जग में साचो तेरो नाम हे राम हे राम हे राम हे राम तू ही माता तू ही पिता है तू ही माता तू ही पिता है तू ही तो है राधा का श्याम हे राम हे राम हे राम हे राम तू अंतर्यामी सबका स्वामी तू अंतर्यामी सबका स्वामी तेरे चरणों में चारो धाम हे राम हे राम हे राम हे राम तू ही बिगारे तू ही सवारे तू ही बिगारे तू ही सवारे इस जग के सारे काम हे राम हे राम हे राम हे राम तू ही जगदाता विश्व विधाता तू ही जगदाता विश्व विधाता तू ही है सुबह तू ही शाम हे राम हे राम हे राम हे राम हे राम हे राम प्रेम से बोलो राजा राम चंद्र की जय जय मेरे ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स please bear with me that in a nutshell was a basic very simple kirtan that we can practice we can sing in our leisure what is kirtan kirtan is derived from a sanskrit root meaning a calling to call to recite to praise or to glorify put simply kirtan is the act of praising and glorifying some form of divinity one of the four types of yogas expose the hindu scripture of the bhagavad gita bhakti bhakti is the process of uniting with the divine through love and devotion thus kirtan's ultimate purpose is to facilitate the awakening and the nurturing of one's devotion for the divine Conjugational practice of kirtan has become perhaps the most one of the most common forms of worship today. While such glorification can be expressed in a variety of ways, including through poetry, drama, dance, or any form of oral recitation, kirtan, in its most well-known form, is the call and response singing 
of a mantra that usually focuses on Radha, Krishna, Sita, or Rama, most common. Though Hindu texts describe the spiritual practice as one that has existed eternally, kirtans were popularized in more recent history by Hinduism's medieval era bhakti movement, starting in about the 6th century with the Tamil poet saints of South India before spreading throughout the rest of the country. One of four types of yogas exposed in the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Bhakti, of course, as we mentioned before, is uniting that divine through devotion. Because music is particularly potent as a vehicle of conveying one's emotion, music is especially effective at evoking the feelings of love for God. Therefore, kirtan is viewed as exceptionally powerful when practiced and singing through music and song. The conjugational practice of kirtan gained the popularity in America in the 1960s with the spread of the Gaudiya Vaishnavism by the ISKCON, International Society of Krishna Consciousness, and its founder, A.C. Bhaktivedanta, Swami Prabhupada. Since then, more and more kirtan singers have risen in popularity over the decades, fueling an expansion of kirtan that has extended throughout most of this world. Ultimately, however, the true power of kirtan, it has nothing to do with how skilled a particular performer is. At its essence, the practice is all about bringing together people of all backgrounds and facilitating a shared spiritual experience in which all can earnestly make that cry. Cry for who? Cry for God's love. For it's when we cooperate, work together in devotion, it's, our, it's then our hearts are most open to the compassion of the divine. Next slide, please. Let us now analyze, the, look at the analytical composition of Kirtan. There are five major concepts or five major pieces that roll up into this to form what's called a Kirtan. Many of you are familiar with the Indian musical system called Ragas. Raga in Indian music it's a pattern of notes having characteristic interv intervals, rhythms, and embellishments used as a bias or basis, sorry, for improvisation. There are approximately 83 or so ragas based on my research. Ragas are very important because it sets the mood or the pace or the theme or the genre for the kirtan. Timing also plays a very effective part. Some of these kirtans are what we call very so they're very uh, soothing, which they sing, they're sung very slowly, and others are very upbeat, very upbeat and very energetic timing again. And certain kirtans, certain ragas, sorry, appeals to different deities. Now, each raga may have a different, it can be sung on a different scale using a different pitch or tune. Ragas also have their own specific melodies. Ragas also have taals and different speeds as we, as we covered. And most importantly now, the lyrics or the meaning. The meaning is what we put into each of these kirtans. Devotional songs of bhajan's kirtans should be sung with a heart full of love. Singing without love is just entertainment. When we sit before our murtis or altars, depending on our, 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 our religious background, whatever form of God that you worship, that love when that love is taken out or extracted from the depths, the deepest chambers of our hearts and placed in music, in raga, with tal, in kirtan, glorifying Bhagwan, glorifying God, what, what are the results of this? The tears begin to flow from the eyes. The body begins to sway in unison with the tune and the tal, and we fall in love with the music. My dear brothers and sisters, bhajans are not merely associated with pitch, rhythm, tune and beat. One gets real happiness, you know, only when one is totally immersed in kirtan or bhajan. And happiness can be derived in two ways. One is through singing kirtan, and the other is through sankirtan, which is community singing in a group, call and answer, as we call it. There may be an element of selfishness singing kirtan, believe it or not. And the singer may sing to earn appreciation, honor, reputation, and yes, in some cases, money. 
In such a case, the main consideration of the singer may be the pitch, rhythm, and tune, and the beat, but not feeling what we call the bhav, that energy, that love for God. On the other hand, community singing, it gives happiness to one and all. How? Singing for fulfillment is community singing. Samyak kirtanam iti sankirtanam, the scriptures tells us. In community singing, the focus is not only on the voice or the people who have come to participate. You should sing freely and wholeheartedly with your heart filled with the love for God and only God. And when you sing to please, please God, your song will automatically be pleasing to the ears. Next slide, please. The great renowned singer of India, Pandit Jashrajji, he lists the six primary ragas as follows. We take a quick, quick look into the ragas now. Rag Bhairav. Bhairav is a morning raga. And solemn peacefulness, it is its, its ideal mood. This raga is grave in mood and suggests seriousness, introversion, as well as a devotional attitude. Let me explain. This particular raga, or all the ragas, by the way, when they are composed by the authors, the ragas are composed and will sung, they, they will sound sorry, the sweetest, or you will get the most bhava when it is sung or delivered at that time of day. So if we take the same, same rag, rag bhairav, and we sing it in the afternoon or the evening, it has less effect than it would have had if you had sung it in the morning because of the timing of the rag and the notes. We'll come to that in a little bit. The next, Rag Malkuns. Malkuns is sung during the small hours of the morning again, just after midnight, so early morning. And the effect of this Rag again, soothing and intoxicating. This Raga is believed to have been created by the goddess Parvati, the wife of Lord Shiva, to calm Bhagwan Shiva. So when Lord Shiva was outraged and was not calming down, after a Tandav dance, in the rage of Sati's sacrifice, she composed this Rag for his calmness. Rag Deepak. Deepak is an evening raga. It is said, this raga had the power of creating fire. Tansin had performed this successfully by singing rag Deepak in the court of the emperor Akbar. Rag Shri. Shri again is an evening raga, sung during the sunset. This raga is full of grace and majesty. And the main mood it creates is one of devotion and dedication. Rag Megha. Megha Malhar is a seasonal rag and sung as an invitation to the rains. Yes, ragas have this power as well. And finally, rag Hindul. Hindul is sung during the first part of the day. It is an ancient raga associated with the spring season. One of my favorite ragas, rag Yaman. Rag Yaman is an evening raga. A lot of the Bollywood songs are composed in this raga. Very soothing, but it, it is most sweetest when it's done in the evening time. Next slide, please. Sound healing therapy uses aspects of music to improve physical and emotional health and well-being. The person being treated partakes in the experience with a trained practitioner. Now, music therapy may include listening to music, singing along to music, the kirtan we speak about, moving to the beat of the music, meditating with that music, or even playing an instrument. You see, healing sound is believed to date back to even ancient Greece, when music was used in an attempt to cure mental disorders. And throughout history, music has been used to boost morale in military troops, to help people to work faster and more productively, and even ward off even spirits, evil spirits by even chanting. More recently, research has linked music to a number of health benefits, from boosting immune function and lowering stress levels to improve the health of premature babies. Sound has long been to have a deep therapeutic and healing qualities. The listener, for example, there are, very, there are many frequencies, varying frequencies, sorry, and vibrations associated with music and sound. When we can find ourselves drawn towards some sound and repulsed by others, that is that uniqueness. For example, a basuri player, someone who blows that basuri, playing along perhaps in a raga of Bhagwan Shri Krishna, very soothing to the air. Then, for one listener, the sounds of the band Death Metal, you know, that type of music, rock music, hardcore rock music. While it may 
be soothing to some, it may anger others. And on this topic, by the way, if we speak of music frequencies now, just to take you on a little tangent here, it is said that women, the females, they have a, a less tolerance for a high pitch sound than we men do. Men, on the other hand, can listen to low, low bassy sounds. Animals also can hear even a higher frequency than humans can. This is how we. This is how animals are trained by blowing a whistle. If you've noticed, at a very high frequency that we cannot hear with our own, at, at our at, with our ears, but animals can certainly hear. Brothers and sisters, as human beings, we are touched by different things, different ways, and with music, it may be very well the frequency that can bring the altered states. It is not uncommon hearing solfeggio frequencies when we are listening to meditation and chakra healing chakra healing let us speak a little bit about this now in terms of how kirtan relates to chakra healing the next slide please if we are looking at the correct slide you will see all of the chakras the major chakras that are listed here with the different sound frequencies next to them The reference here, and the reason for bringing this information to you, is depending on the type of kirtan that we are chanting, you can see here if we are to get into that mood and to raise or to lift the frequency from the range of 396 hertz down to the root chakra, the mool and hara chakra, all the way up to 963 hertz on the crown chakra, the shahastadar chakra, that total range of frequencies can be excited by just music, by just music, sound. And this is how Kirtan plays into opening of the chakras. That Kundalini chakra, that Kundalini Shakti, sorry, as the energy moves from the Muladhara chakra all the way up to the Shahastara chakra. Solfeggio frequencies were chanted by the Gregorian monks during their meditation. As the monks believed the frequencies, when sung in harmony, could bring about spiritual awakening. And these sacred solfeggio frequencies make up a six stone scale and each frequency is said to balance the whole body physically, spiritually, and emotionally. Thus, leading themselves to perfectly healing and balancing the yoga, the yogic chakra system. They are known to be six original solfeggio frequencies, 396 hertz, 396 hertz. This is a low and smooth frequency that helps to cleanse feeling of guilt, fear, and trauma. It is also associated, like I said, with the Muladhara, the root chakra. At 417 hertz, it helps to bring on positive change and creativity. This frequency is known to help relieve stress and tension, helping to loosen tight muscles and joints, which increases physical mobility. 417 hertz is also associated with the Swadhisthana chakra, the sacral chakra. At 528 hertz, this frequency brings about transformation and miracles in a person's life. It is particularly good for anxiety, pain relief, weight loss, and to help rewire neutral pathways into the brain. It is also associated with the Manipura Chakra or the solar plexus. At 639 hertz, the frequency of love and healing. It is a deep and profound and connected with int intimacy and vulnerability. It serves as a foundation for healthy relationships and interconnectivity. This chakra is known as the Anahata Chakra of the heart. At 741 hertz, this deals with the empowerment and speaking tones of truth. 741 hertz is helpful for generating ideas, clear speaking, creative thinking, and increasing self-confidence. It's called the Vishuddhi Chakra, the throat main beneficiary of the 741 hertz at 852 hertz the frequency of reconnection with the spiritual and higher order of thinking it cuts through illusions helping one to see themselves with clarity in their environment this frequency connects us with deep dreams astral projections as well as connecting us with our authenticity the ajnya chakra or the third eye having said that all great souls engage in this devotion. Bhagwan Shri Krishna now explains how they do bhakti, devotees. Let us turn to the slide with the Bhagavad Gita Shloka, please.
I'm sorry I don't have a uh, harmonium with me as I'm traveling, so please bear with me. Vim se bula ba ke vindaban bihari lal ki jai Bhagavad Gita chapter 9 verse 14. Satatam kirtayanto bam yatanch chadridra vrataha namasyantas amam bhaktaya nitya yukta upasate Prince of Lavaka Vindravan Bihari Lala Ki Jai. Bhagavan Shri Krishna tells us in Bhagavad Gita in this verse, always singing my divine glories, striving with great determination, and humbly bowing down before me, they constantly worship me in loving devotion. My dear friends, Bhagavan Shri Krishna says, a devotee becomes attached to Kirtan as a means of practicing their devotion and enhancing it. The chanting of the glories of the Lord, the chanting of the glories of the Lord is called Kirtan, which is defined as Nam Leela Gunanidam Ucher Bhashatu Kirtanam. Singing glories of the names, the forms, qualities, pastimes, the abodes, and the associates of God is called Kirtan. Kirtan is one of the most powerful means of practicing devotion, make no mistake. It involves threefold devotion of Shravana, hearing, Kirtana, chanting, and Smarana, remembering or contemplation. And the goal is to fix the mind upon God, but it becomes easier when done alongside with hearing and chanting. As stated in chapter 6 of Bhagavad Gita, the mind is as restless as the wind. And naturally wanders from thought to thought. Hearing and chanting engage the knowledge senses in the divine realm, which helps repeatedly bring back the mind from its wanderings. Kirtans has many other benefits as well. Often, you know, when people practice devotion through japa, chanting of mantras or, or name of God on a rosary bead or plain meditation, they find themselves sometimes overwhelmed by sleep. However, Kirtan is such an engaging process that it usually drives sleep away. Also, chanting blocks out distracting sounds from the environment. Kirtan can be practiced in groups, mass participation. In addition, the mind desires variety, which it gets through the medium of Kirtan in the form and the names of virtues and pastimes and the abodes of God. And since Kirtan involves, involves loud chanting, the divine vibrations of the name of God, names of God, makes the entire environment auspicious, holy, very positive, and also very energetic. Chanting Kirtan is a devotional practice that helps to uplift the mind, open the heart, and bring us inner peace. It is the fastest and easiest, perhaps the most joyful way to achieve peace of mind. Try it. The mantras are mystical. Universal sounds that resonate with our chakras remove negative energies and tendencies. So it is important that we chant so that we can benefit from this powerful healing energy. It is not about our ego, our self, but it's about chanting the name and the glories of God. We need to chant to express our devotion to something higher than ourselves to open our heart. We need to open our heart daily to the Supreme so that we can live in peace and compassion with all. These kirtans are very old chants composed of mantras which have been given to us by the sage and, sages and saints. They are in the Sanskrit language, which is the language of the gods, a universal language with pure vibrations corresponding to the vibrations of our chakras or vital, subtle energy centers. Most singers, you know, they, they use the, the method of call and response, as we, we outlined earlier, where the leader of the kirtan chants first and the rest of the group follows out loud. The musical instruments generally use, of course, the harmonium, the tablas, the tambourine, majiras, and many other percussion instruments. To learn to chant, you only need to close your eyes and practice the following sounds without worrying about how you sound. Brothers and sisters, Kirtan began gaining popularity, as I said, in the West in the late 90s, when artists such as Krishna Dasji, Jay Uttal, Va. And Dave Stringer, Americans who had discovered yoga and Indian chanting, they began bringing kirtan to the U.S. in, in the yogic studios. 
They sang mantras, chanted in many names of God and formed in small groups, and just as, as Hindu temples and musicians have done for centuries. In the traditional call and response format, and these American Kirtan Wallace, so to speak, taught their fans about the musical branch of Bhakti Yoga through their direct experience. Over time, the crowds grew and the music certainly involved and the musicians multiplied forthwith. Focus as we close. Kirtan or devotional singing is where yoga and spirituality come together. Krishna Das once said, during satsang, in company of the truth, people gather together to remember, to turn within, to find their own inner path to the one supreme. When we gather together to sing like this, we are helping each other to find our own paths. Start chanting today. Feel more connected with yourself and with each other. Let us now look as we close how to build a simple kirtan. As I mentioned, I, don't, I do not have a harmonium with me, but I'm going to improvise and let's see if this works. I should. Firstly, I will start with a mantra. The mantra we're going to use is the Panchaksharya mantra, the five-syllable mantra, Om Namaha Shivaya. Very simple. And let us build this kirtan now. I'll show you how easy it is. And you please follow me. Very simple. We'll start with the Tal and we'll start with the Raga. Raga is very simple. We'll use just one single scale to start. Hopefully you can hear my... Uh, synthesized uh, tabla and percussions in the background. Very simple. We sit upright once again and just follow along with me. Very simple. Om Namah Shivai Om Namah Shivai Om Namah Shivai Om Namah Shivai Try it. Come on. Om Namah Shivai 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 Namah Shivai Om 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 Namah Shivaya. 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 Prem se bolu maapati maha dev ki jai. Radhe, radhe. I thank you. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for allowing me this opportunity to share with you. You see how beautiful you all sung, singing Kirtan. Uh, I hear all of you. Great job indeed. I thank you very much. Garoji, I'll hand it back to you. Thank you very much, uh, Panditji. We have some questions on the chat. Sure. I'm going to ask... Uh, Anjana ji, to please ask your question. Namaste, Pandit ji. Um, Namaste. Question regarding, um, you know, the ragas. Are these ragas also connected to the frequency, the soul feature of frequency scale? So absolutely. Which, which absolutely. Frequency, if you can. Yeah, absolutely. So, so ragas will, will have, each raga has a set of notes that are associated with it. And every single if you think of it, every single song, every single composition, whether it is Hindi, uh, whatever language, even English songs, they are all based on ragas. They all have a series of notes that you, if you follow, you are within, within tune. Now, ragas will vary in pitch, in frequency. And of course, based on the notes, some ragas will stick to the low octaves, some go in the medium octaves, some go in the high octaves. And that will depend on where, what frequency they will hit and what, what chakras are being affected by those frequencies. We didn't go into too much detail with raga specific, but I just wanted to give you an outline of how it affects. But yes, ragas can definitely heal chakras. No, so I wanted to know like which frequency is related to which chakra so that what time of the day, which is suitable to do or, you know, ah, so that's so, why I have a deeper understanding of frequency connected. to. Great, great question. Now, I do not have that information, but I'll be glad you, you're going to put me back to do some research now. So I will get that and I will share it with you all afterwards. Certainly. That's a great question. Yes.
Any other questions? I'm limited for, for screen space. I'm working off a very small laptop, so I apologize. Yes, I will ask another question regarding something. Sure. You know, we do get tears when we are, uh, you know, devoted to that song when doing Kirtan and there's like, you know, the tears comes out on its own. So what does that mean? Like when you are, is it like a heart chakra clearing or opening? What does it mean? First of all, if you, if you, if the tears are flowing, when you listen or you sing Kirtan, I salute you. That means you have, you're making that connection with your form of God, that deity, that, that form of that, that you're worshiping. Yes. The, the, the heart chakra, the, the Anahata chakra, that, that is what your, your heart is, is opening with that Lotus in your heart is opening for God to come and take that seat. And you are creating that, that positive, that, that pure space for Bhagwan to sit on that Lotus. And hence the minute he arrives there, he, the emotions flow, the tears flow, the, the pause, you know, you feel this, your body begins to sway. You begin to perspire all these reactions. It, it, it happens all the time. Very, very wonderful feeling indeed. So don't, I tell people, when you cry, when you sing, do not feel bad. Don't feel ashamed. That's a beautiful thing. That is Bhagwan saying, I accept your devotion. You're humble. Yes. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Rita ji. Yeah. <laughs> Namaste Pandit ji. Namaste. That, that was excellent. Thank you. Uh, there are some chanting. When you listen, you cannot sit. You want to get up and you want to uh -huh. dance along with the chanting. Yes. Um, so is there any kind of uh, like raga or any kind of uh, the way you said frequency or anything goes along with that kind of kirtan? Yes. So, so great question. So, so it's not really the, the frequency. So you can, you can, you can, uh, from any of the frequencies, so to speak, so any of the, the chakras, any of the ragas relating to chakras, what is, what, what creates that, what creates that, uh, that, 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 um, uh, we call it shakti, the energy to get up and dance is more or less from the tal, or more or less from the beat, the drums, the, 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 the rhythm is what you know, creates. And then not only that too, depending on of the, the, the mood of the singer, if the singer is very energetic, we're gonna create that shakti to get up and dance. And so, you know, certain, certain kirtans, is, I'll tell you, especially for Hanumanji, or, or, or when, they, when, we do, um, when we do Garba for Mataji's puja, those are energized. They, they, you have no choice but to get up and dance. But yes, and, and again, I don't have all, I didn't go into too much detail with, with, in terms of the frequencies of the ragas, but they are connected. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yeah. definitely. Panditji, uh, I have a question. Sure. Uh, so you talk about Kirtan as well as Sankirtan. Mm -hmm. uh, are there um, advantages of, uh, I mean, what, 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 what do people, what should be preferred? Yes. Chanting by yourself or chanting together in a community yes. congregational setting? Absolutely. So Gauruji, you know, during the pandemic, um, we had very limited Sankirtan. Hence, we did all these online satsangs and so forth. Yeah. But I'll tell you something, as a, as a pundit, I, I, today was, I had all day of uh, programs today. Um, one of your students actually on here, Radhaji was in one of my sessions. I'm in, in Toronto actually, by the way, right now traveling. Um, as we, as we you know, congregate in numbers and we talk about the Sankirtan and call and answer, well, like, yeah, exactly like, like you're, you're showing here, that environment when all, you know, hundreds of voices come together, hundreds of hands are clapping, the rhythm is going, music is playing, all oh, the energy, the uplifting energy, the positivity, the vibrations, it, it resonates in the building. If you're on a Monday, if you're in a hall, it just resonates and it's, it's a fantastic form of worship. Now, your, your question to differentiate one or the other, I prefer both. Sometimes I will sit at home with my harmonium and my, my music box and I will, you know, I will, I will get enjoyment. But you know, when you, when you are in that, that, that space of Sankirtan with others, the energy level, when you combine energy, it just flows. It's it's immaculate. Yeah. Thank you for that. I remember reading some research. Uh, I can look it up, where uh, choir singing, singing together in a community setting, it releases endorphins. It's really good for you because essentially, what are we experiencing? We're experiencing a tightness of the heart, a 
uh, being locked into our own individual personalities and singing together releases that tightness. It allows us to engage as one singular, singular entity and not just as you know, 200 people in one room. Definitely. And, um, and that, that feeling, that experience of a greater self is, uh, is truly, a, you know, you, if, you know, a sense of euphoria that comes out of it. So I, I always look forward to, I, in fact, whenever I meet people who tell me they're stressed out or they're, uh, you know, not able to sleep, I always tell them to go to a Sankirtan yes. and they always look at me strange saying, this is a, this is a strange guy <laughs> giving weird <laughs> advice. <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it has a, it has a, it's an amazing calming, calming effect, Gauruji, as you, as yes. you know. And, you know, being part of it, you know, you have the combination, you see people crying, you see people dancing there, everyone's swaying, everyone is like, you know, in, into the mood. It's, it's just a beautiful feeling. What an experience. Yeah. 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 Uh, in, you know, one of the uh, speakers who talk, talked about this topic a couple of years ago, I remember, they said that uh, in the ISKCON system, right, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that uh, Kirtan is Chet Darpanam Marjanam, the, the polishing of the mirror of the heart. Yep. That yep. we see the world uh, reflected through the heart, the mirror of the heart. Yep. And if the mirror is clouded or occluded or broken, then that's how we perceive the world. But yep. a shiny mirror... You know, we get to see everything clear, live, you know, bright and luminous. Absolutely. And, yeah. Absolutely. Well, well, well said. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Panditji, you're running a uh, Mahagyana Yagna? Could you talk uh, more about that? Just concluded this morning, actually. <laughs> That's what uh, Raraji is, is typing in here. Yes, uh, three, okay. uh, three session Mahagyana Yagna. We finished this morning here in Brampton, uh, Ontario, Canada. So I'm heading back home tomorrow. <laughs> what, what, could you talk more about it? Sure, sure. So, so Mahagyan Yagya. Um, so on Friday night, uh, we started Friday night. So we focus uh, two hours, each were two hour sessions. Friday night, we focus, the main focus was on Lord Shiva and the Devis, Durga Mata, of course. Um, Saturday night, last night, our focus was on Hanumanji and Prabhu Sri Ram. We read, read from the Ram Charitamanas, Katha was from Ramayan. And this morning, we, we went back to Ramayan this morning. My Katha was on Jatayu. And uh, if you remember the story of Jatayu, Jatayu was perhaps one of the, other than Hanumanji in Ramayana, perhaps one of the most selfless characters. And my message this morning was on selflessness, not selfishness. And we're dealing now with a new strain of this virus, Omicron or Micron, what do we call it? It's, it seems as though we are heading back into another pre-corona stage, mm -hmm. in my opinion, because it's, we're, it's, they're popping up all over. And God forbid, if we, if we get there again, we need to get out of this mode of selfishness and be selfless. And my message this morning was in this time, in this season of giving, in this evening of thanks, in the season of Christmas, Christ's message was that was one of selflessness. And when we, I, I said to my audience this morning, when we go to amazon.com to order Christmas gifts for friends and relatives, think of someone who is in need, a family who is in need, who will, will appreciate a box of chocolates, a box of candies, maybe a, a couple items from the grocery, canned food, and give, be selfless. And that, that was the message which, which we left with this morning. Beautiful message. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I wanted to ask you a, a different question, but related to Kirtan and Sankirtan. Uh, you, you grew up in the Caribbean. You're a, you know, a, a multi-generation sort of Hindu family that's been out of India for so many generations. And yet the tradition is strong. And... Uh, and, and your son is also training to be a pundit. Yep. How has the practice of Kirtan and Sankirtan helped in progressing the tradition so many generations out with so much purity? Great, great, great question. So um, born in Trinidad, I, I left Trinidad at the age of 16, came here to Canada to pursue my studies and then moved to the United States where I've been living for the past 32 years. My father is a pundit. He was, um, both parents were retired, they're retired educators. He was a high school teacher. And um, Myself, I am fourth generation Indian. So my, my great, great, great grandparents came from India and, you know, migrated to the Caribbean. My mother tongue is English. It's not Hindi. I wish it was Hindi, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. Um, but we grew up in a, in a very tight knit community um, surrounded by, by primarily Hindus in my, in my area. Um, Trinidad, those of you who are familiar with the geography of Trinidad, we have perhaps a branch of every single nationality living on that island. Um, million and a half people, about 50% Hindus. 
Um, we have a, a, a plethora of, of mandirs, and we celebrate every single religious holiday. Um, I had the opportunity of attending a Roman Catholic school where I went to church with my Catholic brothers. I had the opportunity for five years to attend an Islamic school uh, as well, a high school. Sorry, yes, high school. And uh, there I spent five years also learning you know, the, the scriptures as well. But coming to the United States and migrating with a family with a, with a, with a very strong background in Hinduism, um, at the age of five, I, was, I started playing the harmonium, not from any, any guru, but it was just, my mother had a piano and it, it just sat there collecting dust. And I started, I, you know, I used to climb up on the stool with one finger and started playing. The first song I played on the piano, Ik pyaar ka nag mahe. And that was, my, that was my catalyst now. When the guys in the temple heard that I can play with one finger, they said, come, come, we have a harmonium, come to the temple. So at five years old, I started at the, at the temple playing bhajans and, and started with kirtan. And then, you know, it just evolved from there. Um, and I'm so happy and blessed to be in, in the company of, you know, great souls like you all. And certainly given an opportunity to travel and to spread this uh, Sanatan Dharma all across the world. So for me, it is educating the young uh, children, and especially here in the Western world, we have now we have great pundits we have we have very very learned pundits in 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 all across north america and what the challenge i have found is that very few and i respect all of them very few are able to take our, our very rich scriptures and break it down into a level that can be understood by our youth who are born who were born here in the western world and perhaps hindi was or sanskrit was not their their first language and this is something that i think i have i have taken and and running with it so it's it's catching it is a lot of young people are, are caught on to this and are really understanding the basics the grassroots and they want to pursue it further by all means we can do this so uh, i i think it's a blessing and certainly hci has certainly helped with this as well to to broaden this this realm and to spread our beautiful uh, I, I call it dharma all across this this world Panditji, you have any syllabus or um, any curriculum uh, that the way you make your um, things simple for the younger kids? So it's all it's all homegrown, uh, but I'd be more than happy to share it with you. I can actually share some of my uh, my kathas, and they're all in PowerPoint, and Please. I can share them with you. Please and uh, yeah. Yeah. just message me. My Gaurav, you can can put my email address up, and uh, okay. I can uh, just message me. Tell sure. me what you need, and I can I, I've. I cover, I've covered most of the scriptures in terms of um, the messaging. My specialty happens to be Ramayana, Devi, Devi Bhagavatam, Shiv Puran, and, and, and some Bhagavad Gita as well. I'm waiting on Gauravji to start teaching me some Bhagavad Gita. Oh, this is wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, please give me your email address and I'll contact you. Yeah. It's, it's simple. It's om, O-M, at Pandit Neil, P-A-N-D-I-T-N-E-I-L dot com. Pandit N-E-I-L, Om. P A N D I T N E I L dot com. It's in the chat. It's in the chat window. Oh, just dot com. Nothing else. Dot com. Yes, panitneel dot com. You can also, if you if you'd like to to look or to listen to some of my lectures, you can go to. I have a a a, a quite a, a large following on uh, YouTube YouTube okay. channel Pandit Neel Dev Prasad, and also on Facebook as well. Okay, thank you so much. Sure, I'll, I'll be happy. To, whatever materials I have, I'll be more than happy to share it with you. I'm very impressed. Yes. Thank you, Ji. Thank you. Ratnadi, your hand is up as well. Have you asked your question? Uh, not yet. Um, sure, can I go? Please, please go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Uh, namaste, Pandit Ji. Very namaste. nice. Uh, um, Anyabha. Anyabha. This course, we really enjoyed it. Um, I just want to narrate a small thing here. Uh, I come from South India, uh, especially from Bangalore. And then my uh, we visit a temple in um, northern Karnataka. It is a Dathatreya, Lord Dathatreya temple. It is in a, a small village called Gangapur. There, during um, the Arthi time, in the evening, during Arthi time, they play the dhol and then they also play some other instruments. I don't know exactly the name of the instruments. So they play that in very loud noise or loud sound, I should say, then we see that the whole village comes to the temple during Arthi time. And there are few ladies, probably men also, but ladies are prominent. You can see them like bubbling with so much energy during the Arthi time. 
And some ladies, I have also seen them like climb up the pole because they are filled with that energy. And you can see them like having that, doing things that you can not imagine a housewife doing it. That kind of energy we see. Um, is that because all their chakras are open during that time? Yes, yes. That, that's a great point. And I, and I totally respect uh, all forms of worship. In, um, you know, I've seen this with my own eyes. Um, mm -hmm. I, 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 had, I was curious and I attended one of these temples here in the U.S. And uh, I've witnessed this with my own eyes. I was, I was totally impressed. First, I was scared. It was, it was a little bit... Uh, yes, it does uh, look scary. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, like yourself, I had questions. But you know what? Um, uh, it, it's, it's their form of worship. And uh, they practice this from, from a very young age in that the, 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 the chakra is open, the kundalini is open. And the minute that drum is played in a certain way, I think one of the drums that they use is called a tapu drum. I could be wrong. And it is played in such a rhythm that it, 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 it agitates or ag it, 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 uh, it begins to, to open up the chakras, but agitates them to, to work in such a way that the energy begins to flow and it flows up and then they start moving, you know, they, they start swaying and then it becomes a, a, like a trance in a dance. Yes. Um, high energy, high energy. I, I totally respect them. Yeah, and uh, and they don't remember anything once no. the once the arti is done. Yes, yes. Um, I'll, I'll share an experience with you. I was uh, I know we're almost out of time. Um, I was invited to one of these temples. Uh, this was in Orlando, Florida, and um, there was a big fire. So they they dug a, a pit, a fire pit, which was about ten feet in the uh, in the lawn at the temple, and they filled it with coals, red hot coals. They filled it. And the, the pujari or the pundit, the priest, he came to me and says, you are going to walk on fire today. I was like, okay, um, that's new. And um, unfortunately, I could not because the, the fire, it, it, it got so, so, uh, so, so big, the fire department came and they put it out. So we were not allowed to do it. But this is the type of practice that they do. And I've seen it, I've seen it on video where they get into this trance with, this, with, this, with the drums and they're able to walk, like you said, on fire without remembering anything or feeling any pain, which is incredible. Yes, and they don't even have wounds. Like they don't fall right. they're completely. Correct. They're on the pole and yeah. you don't see them slide down or fall and they're happy there. Yes, mainly in South India, I think. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Okay. absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. Great, no, thank you. Panditji, I, I really appreciate that you've taken time out on a, a busy weekend, and it's always a, a, a treat to to have you back at these Thank sessions. Thank you, Thank you. Yeah. And always for everybody a else, I, I highly recommend that you subscribe to Panditji's uh, YouTube channel. I thoroughly enjoy your Kirtans, Panditji, uh, online, and uh, I love to chant along, and uh, all those words of wisdom are, are, are wonderful. So thank, thank you, you for everything thank that you. you do. Thank you. God's blessings to each and every one of you and do enjoy Thank the rest you. of your course. And uh, if you need any, if I can help you in any way, please reach out. I'd love to. Thank Have you. a safe and stay safe, everyone. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sitaji, could, could we review uh, the homework again? And then uh, you could please uh, bring up the closing prayers. Uh, Sikitaji, are you bringing up the homework? Thank you. are mute, Sikitaji. You are mute. I, I can bring up the homework. It's not a problem. Just give me one second. Um, all right. So the homework assignment is uh, pick any one of these two questions and write a brief essay, one page really, uh, on as a CHT, as you go through the course and you get to the end of it, you're going to be uh, you know, meeting people and you'll be talking to them. These are two such conversations. In what circumstances would you as a CHT recommend that someone join and participate in a Kirtan chanting? Uh, so, you know, Pandit, you talked about it at length. So think about what you heard and write an answer that you feel comfortable with. Or the second question is, Please describe Hindu wedding rituals to someone who's not attended any Hindu weddings themselves. And so, you know, when people want to know what happens in a Hindu wedding, are you able to confidently describe what the process is and how it's done? So think about those two questions, pick the one that you like the most and write those uh, answers out. 
and we look forward to your answers. Now I'll lead us into the closing prayers and then we'll wrap up today's session. Please sit comfortably, sitting in any comfortable posture. Sitting at the back straight. If you're sitting on a chair, full foot contact on the floor below. If you're sitting upright you know, with cross legs, any posture is all right. The back is straight, but not stiff. The back, neck and head are in a straight line. Now close your eyes. Relax the expression on the face. Let the tongue sit at the bottom of the mouth. Relax your shoulders. Relax your belly. As you breathe in, let the belly expand. As you breathe out, simply let go. We're going to chant Om three times and then the closing prayer, Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina. Bring your palms together in Namaskar Mudra. Pressing the palms together gently, touching the fingers together gently, gently touching the back of the thumbs into the chest. Bring your attention to the hollow space between the palms and pay attention to any vibration, any sensation. Stay right here in the palms. We're going to chant home first. Exhale completely, take a deep breath. Inhale. Oh. Om Shanti 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 Take your arms behind you, grab your right wrist with your left hand, breathing in, stretch. Breathing out, bend forward in a deep sense of surrender. Come back up, breathing in, release your hands, rub your palms together to generate some heat. And gently cup your eyeballs to transfer that heat. Massaging the face and the neck gently. And now, blinking, open your eyes and pull your palms back like an open book. May all be happy. May all be free from illness. May all see that which is auspicious. May no one suffer. Om, peace, peace, peace. Thank you very much for attending today's session. And I look forward to seeing you another weekend. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday and um, have a great Rest of your week as well. Sita ji, we are ending on time. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Gaurav ji. It's been excellent as always. Thank you so much. I just want to tell you that everything is there in the Moodle as well. Uh, The slides and everything and also the homework. So please check that out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.